These are the top 10 tools of 2022 from this channel. And not just my top 10, but your top 10. These are the most popular tools that I've shown on the channel over the last year. If you're interested in checking any of these out further, they'll be linked in the description below. I'd also like to know what your favorite tool that you got this year was. Comment below. Let's go. One of the most popular tools on the channel that I've shown this year was the Thin Rip Jig. This is about a $30 tool, very inexpensive, but it's so handy to have. Now the Thin Rip Jig is excellent for making the exact same pieces over and over and over. So if you're making trim for say a miter stand or a piece of furniture like on this workbench or on my miter stand, you set this up in the miter slot, tighten it down, and then every time you make the cut, all you have to do is move your fence over until the board touches this again and then you make another cut. You can repeat this over and over and over again. It has a guide wheel there on the end that actually helps roll the material so it's not binding anything up, and it's just making precise cuts every single time. This was by far one of the most popular tools I showed on the channel in 2022 because, in my opinion, it's inexpensive and it's super useful. Number two on the list are track saws. Now track saws aren't for everyone. They are a luxury tool in my opinion. It's not something you have to have, but it's one of those tools that when you get it, there's like nothing else like it because it makes things so much faster. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate. Time is money and you can break down sheet goods like that. Like it's nice. Now I have a few options that I was able to test this year. The Win, the Craig, and the Festool cordless one. I have the Milwaukee on order, but it won't be here until 2023. If you're on a budget, the Win track saw is an excellent option for a track saw. You're gonna get a very nice saw that's gonna work well for you, especially if you don't use them a lot. Now, if you have intentions of using the track saw quite a bit, I would highly recommend the Craig. It is a very good middle of the road option between a budget and a high-end track saw. It's extremely accurate and it's very powerful. It works very well. I was impressed with the Craig track saw. If you want a high-end track saw, I can't say enough about the Festool. The cordless track saw just makes things a lot easier. You don't have to deal with the cord. It, super powerful even with one battery in it'll work it makes it a little less powerful with one battery but i just really appreciate how well the dust collection works especially if you add that little cap that i've shown before right there over that dust port that really helps the dust collection i'll link to that as well it's made by a friend of mine whitworks drew wit over at whitworks on youtube you got to check this part out but all in all a track saw is one of those tools that when you get it in the shop you kind of think why did I invest in something like this earlier? Before I get to number three, if you're a new woodworker or you're just starting out, I know how frustrating it can be to figure out what's actually selling or how to build something. That's where we'd like to help you out. Go to 731woodworks.com store. There you'll find easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. Those projects, especially the furniture pieces, check out the seven plan bundle I have of my farmhouse projects. Those were proven to sell in my local area. Some of my top sellers are in that bundle and they're so easy to follow. Most anybody could build them. If you use the code TOOLS2022, I'll give you 20% off that bundle or any other plan bundle you see that interests you. Number three on the list, one of the most popular tools by you was the DFM Small Square. This is one of my favorite small squares in the shop. I grab this all the time just for making marks or layout, things like that. This is a highly accurate and very well-made square similar to the Woodpecker's brand Delft Square, but at half the cost. And this one is also made in the USA by a small company. So I really appreciate that fact too. One of the things I appreciate about the DFM square is the fact that these holes that you can use to lay out lines are in 16th inch increments versus the Delft square, which is eighth inch. I also like that the drop pins included there that you can set up different uh, angles very easily. So if you're laying out hexagons and things like that, this is a great quick way to do that. This is also three and a half inches, which works perfect on two befores because you can mark the whole width of that two before. It also has the shoulder feature. So if you're using this like a shoulder square, you can continue that mark around the edge of the board. And because this sets up on its own, it's easy to use this to set up table saw blades, router bits, everything like that. This is just an excellent all around high quality square to have in the shop. Number 
four on the list is the right angle drill attachment. This was one of the most popular tools I've shown on the channel. I had an older version. I got this version now. It is impact ready, which means you can use it in your quarter inch impact driver. Most of us have those in the shop. This is one of those tools that every single woodworker on planet Earth should have this if you have a drill in your driving screws. The reason for that is this thing is super handy to get into small spaces. The way this works is there's a knuckle joint right in that 90 degree elbow that allows it to turn. And then you can actually get into smaller spaces where your drill or your impact wouldn't normally go. For instance, I've used these to drive pocket hole screws in small furniture uh, tons of times. This is probably one of the main uses for that. You can also get into small crevices to drive holes or drill holes if you have impact ready drill bits. And because it is impact ready, you still get that pop, 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 pop feel when you're driving those screws. So it helps drive it with less pressure. It's just a super inexpensive tool that you got to have in the shop. One of the most popular, I'm telling you. Next on the list is the flush cut trim saw. This is one of those tools that is inexpensive again, but every woodworker should have. And it is one of the most popular tools I've shown on the channel. And I actually just featured this in one of my five tools under 30 videos a few weeks ago but it quickly rose to the top because it's so useful and again, inexpensive. I like the fact that it has hardwood marked on one side and softwood on the other. There's no guessing, you know which teeth to use on what surface you're cutting. And the fact that this blade is extremely flexible allows you to flush cut dowels and things like that. It's also great to cut small parts or small pieces with where you normally wouldn't want to use a power saw for that. Now this is made in Japan, which if you know anything about hand saws and things like that, that's where the top quality hand saws are made. And this is made by a brand called Suizan. They're very popular and it's a high quality saw. It's extremely well made, lightweight. It's gonna take up a lot of space, but most importantly, it's not gonna take a lot out of your wallet. Get you one of these. Next on the list are planers. Now, one of the missions of my channel over the last few months has been to find the perfect or the best beginner or budget options for tools. And one of those was the Craftsman planer. I've done quite a bit of research, watched a lot of reviews, read a lot of reviews, and picked this Craftsman planer. This is my pick for the most budget friendly or best beginner option for planers. And it was really popular as far as you goes. And I really like the planer. It done an extremely good job for the price. Now, when you buy budget tools, you do have to give up some of the features of the more higher end brands, as well as maybe some of the accuracy, things like that. I mean, there's a trade off there when you're buying budget tools. But for a budget option, this is a great planer for those who are looking to plane things once a month, once every couple of weeks, something you're not going to use a lot. Now, if you are going to start using the planer a lot, then of course, I would really suggest the DW735X. It is a workhorse in the shop and has been proven over many, many years of being a lot of woodworkers' favorite benchtop planer. However, if you want to step up to a more premium line of a planer, check out the Oliver. This is one of those buy once, cry once type tools. It costs quite a bit more, but it does have that Shelix helical head on there, which makes a huge difference in the final finish of the plane board. It works extremely well. It also has some nice add-ons such as the carriage lock so that like on the Craftsman when I was planning, you would see the top of it raise up and down as the board passed through, where the Oliver's not gonna do that because you can lock it down. It also has a Wixie digital readout on there, which is extremely handy to fine tune what you're planning, as well as several other features that are not found on many other planers in this price point anyway. All in all, I think the DeWalt DW735X is the best planer for most people if you have the budget. If you're on a tighter budget, go with the Craftsman, you won't be disappointed. And if you have a higher budget, then the Oliver is an excellent choice, especially because it has that bird Shelix helical head. It really does make a difference in your planning. And keeping with the theme of best beginner or budget options, I did get a chance to review the skill table saw. By far one of the better picks, I think, for beginners or those on a budget for a table saw. At 350, sometimes lower at this price point, I don't think you're gonna find a better table saw. Now, this is a job site style table saw, but it does have those collapsible legs, which I really do appreciate. And it was super solid. It didn't move or shake and anything like that. And as far as power goes, it has plenty of power to cut through most any wood that you want. And because it's a full size table saw, that 10 inch blade, you're gonna be able to rip four by fours and things like that with ease. But the star of the show on this budget option is the fence. It has a very nice rack and pinion fence that is dead accurate. I had zero issues with the fence on this, whereas a higher end saw that I got in recently, I had quite a bit of trouble with the fence, still having it. This saw is a great pick for those that are on a budget. 
It will accept some of the dado stack, but not the full dado stack. You can put two blades on there, giving you a little bit of dado-ness on this, but not the full thing. That's one of the drawbacks on a lot of the budget saws. Also, I saw some complaints about the throat plate being a little bit too flexible. I didn't notice that, but there is an option that you can buy a better throat plate, a zero clearance. I'll put that link in the description with it. This table saw was one of the most popular tools I had shown on the channel this year. And the reason I know that is it's consistently sold out. And I think we are driving a lot of those sales. So if you're interested in a very good saw, check the link. Hopefully it's in stock. You'll get a good saw. Next on the list, one of the things that I was surprised most about was the Bremen Parallel Clamp. At about $35 regular price, I think this is the best budget option for parallel clamps. If you saw my video where I compared this to about eight, nine other brands of parallel clamps, including Bessie, Jet, Jorgensen, some of the top name brands in the business, this one competed with all of them. I put it through torture tests, I dropped it, I squeezed it, I did everything you could to a clamp, and this come out as my budget pick. I don't think you can go wrong with these, especially since they have a limited lifetime warranty and they're so cheap. If you like Harbor Freight and you don't mind Harbor Freight brand tools, this is a very good option for a parallel clamp. I had my doubts when I started testing all of these clamps. I kind of figured that Bessie and Jet would do well just based on their history, based on the fact that I have several Bessie clamps in the shop and have used them extensively. So I had a little bit of doubt on parallel clamps from Harbor Freight just because a lot of their other clamps, like their F-style clamps, when they get into the longer ones, they tend to bend and have softer metals, cheaper plastics, things like that. So I was very, very surprised that this held up as well as it did in those tests. And again, this is one of the most popular tools we've shown on the channel this year. If you wanna see that entire video, I'll link that in the description below. Next on the list is the new 3M sander that came out this way. A real game changer as far as sanders go, in my opinion. Now this is a premium sander. In other words, the price point is gonna be a more premium price because this is made for professionals or those who actually sand a lot, several hours a day, multiple hours a week. A hobbyist sander, such as a DeWalt or a Bosch, things like that, are typically made for those who aren't sanding as much. This is made to take that abuse. One of the things that impressed me most about this sander is how smooth and how quiet it really is. Check this out. Very little vibration. Most of what you hear is the wind coming off the spinning disc. Very well balanced, just an all around excellent, excellent. And I was very impressed with this 3M sander. I got the five inch version. They make a six inch version. They're still on sale at the time of filming this video at Tay Tools, which is where I recommend you get it from. You're gonna get super fast shipping. I really appreciate this sander. I like the fact that it's variable speed. You can go from super slow. Super fast. I mean, <laughs> I like that. I like the fact that I can push that power button on top and it actually turns off the paddle so I can lay that down, not have to worry about it. And I also do appreciate, I like the fact that it has the paddle on there. So when I lay my hand on there, the, the sander comes on or I can lay it uh, upside down and use that as a sander facing up. It's just an all around great sander. I do wish that the cord was able to be detached. It is an extremely long cord and it's very hard to put away like in a drawer without wrapping it all up. And the sanding stroke on this is fairly aggressive, but at the same time, you're still getting that super smooth finish. In other words, you're gonna be able to take off a lot of material very quickly. With that, that's gonna cut down on your sanding time, but it's also gonna leave that smooth finish so you don't have to worry about sanding marks or swirl marks or anything like that. It's just an extremely good sander, a very premium sander, but you do get what you pay for in this package in my opinion. Not only was this one of the most viewed tool videos that I did this year, it was also one of the most well received by those who purchased the sander. You can go back and read the comments on that. They were seriously impressed with this sander when they got it in. It's extremely impressive. If you don't believe me, I'm telling you, go check those comments out. People love this thing. If the 3M sander is not in your budget, but you still want a really cool, nice sander, check out the new detail sanders that just came out this year. This one I had no idea about was a Rikon detail sander slash buffer. I just did a review on that just a few weeks ago. These are two of my favorite sanders other than the 3M that I got in this year because they're so useful for getting into tight areas, into corners, and in my case, down into small boxes and trays, things like that. 
If you want the best of the best, the, the more premium line out of these two, the Milwaukee M12 Orbital Detail Sander is the way to go. It has tons of accessories that come with it. It is on the M12 platform. You can get the kit that includes the battery and the charger at about a couple hundred dollars. This is one of the better built sanders out of these two. Now the Rikon is still an extremely good value at less than $100. You can still get into small spaces, but I do like the fact that this Milwaukee has the home plate design on the bottom. You can get into corners and things like that. However, this one actually seemed to take off more material faster because it was spinning. It is orbital in a way, but it's not vibrating or anything like that. Either one of these would have been my favorite small tool that I purchased this year. However, because I have two, it's really hard to choose because they kind of do different things. I am glad that I've got these. One of the things I appreciate about both of them is the fact that they're both variable speed sanders. They, they both function a little differently. The Rikon is variable speed by push button, similar to the 3M sander, where the Milwaukee is variable speed in a couple of different ways. It does have a push button on the back labeled one, two, three, four, which actually limits how fast it can actually go. And then the trigger is also variable speed, which I really much prefer. If I had to pick between these two and it didn't matter what the budget was, 200-ish, sometimes a little more, or 100-ish, I would certainly recommend the Milwaukee. I just think it's a better built tool. Although, again, I don't think you'll be disappointed with the Rikon if you wanted to spend a little less. One of the main questions I get about the Milwaukee Fine Detail Sander is what's the difference in this versus, say, an oscillating tool like this Rigid? Well, the main difference is the oscillating tool actually goes side to side where the detail sander goes in an orbit much like your little orbital sander that you have you're getting like small circles that's what the detail sander is doing the oscillating tool moving side to side will create fine scratches which will show up especially when you start staining you'll see those scratches you're like oh man i wish i'd have not done that this won't do that because it's in that orbital pattern. If you do small parts, or if you need to sand into tight areas, I highly recommend picking one of these up for your shop. One of my favorite projects and or upgrades I made this year was the crosscut sled I built. It's the safer crosscut sled in my opinion. It has handles so your hands are never anywhere near that blade or where the blade exits. It is an excellent project, very easy to do, and I have plans available for it. Click that box right there to go watch that video. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also, another one of my favorite videos right there.